Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is where you are. Welcome to Collider Dailies. I'm John Algets, and with me, as always, is... Maggie Lovett. So today we have an interview for you, which we have not gotten the chance to do an interview. So I'm excited, and I know that Maggie's excited. I'm uh, so excited. Because <laughs> the person who we are interviewing is Neil Newbon, uh, voice actor, performance actor, just all around great performer behind Astarian Heisenberg from, uh, I should probably say who Astarian is from, Astarian from Baldur's <laughs> Gate, uh, Heisenberg and Nikolai from Resident Evil, and uh, so many other things. He's incredibly talented. We got the chance to talk to him, so yeah. Uh, yeah, let's get right into that interview. First and foremost, uh, you have been nominated for a Golden Joystick, along with the game in general has been nominated for a bunch of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, with Baldur's Gate, Game of the Year has been thrown out there and Game of the Decade, even some yeah. people have gone so far yeah. as to say. Uh, how does it feel to be a part of something that is so beloved and so big, seemingly so quickly? Um, yeah, it's been quite a trip, actually, uh, in the best possible way. I think the thing is, we we came to this quite early on, the, obviously, Larian, the amazing company, Larian, were working on it for many years before we joined. But we've been working on this, some of us, for four years. I started in 2019. Um, it's been a long journey in, and an amazing one as well. It's been incredible work to be given. And especially those of us, you know, that have been working so long to see our characters develop in such a way, which is highly unusual for a computer game of, you know, apart from those big, massive, expansive games, um, which there are, are many. But to be working on a game like this and see the evolution of your character, the evolution of the story, the amount of passion that we put into it as well, and the amount of actors that were brought in to do full performance, not just voice, but full performance, as well as as, as uh, Amelia Tyler, who's an amazing um, uh, voice actor. Well, she's an amazing actor who does voice work, who narrated the entire thing as well. You know, that, and we got to be in the suit, in the volume and, and do this, which was amazing. So the amount of passion, the love, the experience, the fun that we've all had, then you have to package it into this wonderful story written by these amazing writers. You know, Stephen Rooney is my main writer with this amazing company. And then you just go like that <laughs> and you hope for the best and you hope that people understand what we were trying to do, what I was trying to do with the character, but you have no control of it. You just have to sit back and go, whether you like it or hate it, just have a reaction, please, you know. And then to see the love, the fun, the entertainment, the connection to all the characters, particularly for me, obviously, with my character, Astarian, to see them not only embraced, but really understood. Uh, largely, a lot of the time, um, I don't think really, I'm speaking for myself now, there's a lot of them in my character that I think people have found that was definitely supposed to be there. You know, It wasn't like, oh, I didn't see that about the character. It was very much like, yeah, absolutely, you get it, which is incredible. And the nuances that I tried to lace in under the amazing stewardship of all the directors, involved as well as pit stop productions who, who, who directors came from as well as Larian um, and the storytellers there to be able to seed it with tiny nuances and little beats here and there that were really my ideas and their ideas combined that we probably would never be noticed necessarily people picked up on these things so I think that was incredibly overwhelming and then the love that's poured out and then it went further <laughs> and it became bigger <laughs> And it was, it's now been referenced by South Park, apparently, yes. I've seen. Now, that's a trip. That's amazing. Um, I really hope they like it because I'm massive fans of Matt and Trey. <laughs> so I really hope they like the game. But I think the main thing was that none of us really expected it to be this. Mm -hmm. We all expected it to be taken well and to do well. Because, I, I mean, I played Early Access like everybody else. I knew it was a great game. And the sandbox is amazing. The limit, almost near limitless choice of how you want to play the game is amazing. But you never know, you know, you're never entirely sure how people are going to receive it. But it's been nothing but love and joy. And and Wizards of the Coast have even been in touch with us and are helping us and supporting us as well. And they're a great company. So it's like, it, it's just been a dream, really. And I think for me, I always got to play the bridesmaid. Do you know what I mean? I was always the villain, the antagonist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I, I, my character is an anti-hero, so it's not that far away from what I usually play. <laughs> but for, to have this level of attention is definitely new. And I'm trying to be very grounded and very positive about the experience. And uh, remember that, you know, it's 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 the character that people really are interested in more than anything else. And I get to, I got to step into his shoes for four years 
and hug him through his journey and help him. <clears throat> and that's an honor. So yeah, it was a very humbling experience, but yeah, wild, it's crazy. You talked a little bit about like playing the character and, and going through like the, the, uh, the emotions of this, this role. And something I think is so fun with him is that there's a duality to him because of the limitless options of the game. You get ascended a star in, which frankly scares the shit out of me. That character is like, he's supposed so to. Cool. Oh, it is. It's really and supposed it, to. It's so good the way that you, you play him. But what was mm -hmm. it like getting to explore two sides of a character, which you don't often get to do in a role? Well, I think the thing is about it is that it wasn't just to this is it wasn't just to um it wasn't just two sides to the character. It was um every conceivable possible combination of every situation that the character can face. So it wasn't just ascended or quote unquote good or uh, better or whatever a star in. It was all the different shades of grey in between. Uh, I'm a greedy actor. I love my work and I love give, being given roles I can really get my teeth into and throw every tool set I can imagine at it. So to be given that opportunity by Larian was a blessing and a gift. And I have to say thanks to Josh Whedon, who got me in for the casting initially, uh, who's the director at um, Pit Stop, and also to jo uh, Jason Latino and Swen as well, who signed off on me. Um, but it's like, you know, it, it's, it's a really fascinating way. I like games a lot for this because in film or theatre, there is the story and maybe sometimes you get branching narratives and maybe that they're always set branching narratives like sliding doors is a start to finish experience with two different realities right in games the reality is chosen by the player and the story is dictated by the player in in things like this where there are so many different choices and different possibilities and combinations the fact that larian allowed all of that and the different permutations and combinations and the amount of work that ha that to do that takes is extraordinary. So to see people's reactions to these two different characters, I, it's like, I, I just want you to have a reaction. You know, you, you find him scary as Ascended. You should, he's terrifying. <laughs> but other people might really like that ending for that character and feel, actually, I saw a star in always going that route. Whereas other characters might want to, you know, help him redeem or help him not only survive and thrive in a positive way, let's say, um, because obviously, you know, irrespective of which way you choose, he is a trauma sufferer, he is a survivor. And I think it's it ultimately, you know, I don't really have an opinion on how the story should go. Um, it's just great to see how people decide how their story goes. So yeah, it was very, very cool as an actor to, to be able to play everything. It was very cool. I enjoyed it a lot. I think I may have strayed away from your question there a little bit. Sorry if I did. <laughs> You're totally fine. And how does, like, what does the process look like? for trying to develop a character like that, that has so many facets. Because mm. when you're working on something that's a little bit more linear, I feel like it's a little bit easier to like be able to fine tune the little details that you can bring out in the character. But with a character that, you know, there's so many different possibilities, mm -hmm. what does that work look like to have to try to <laughs> develop that? It's a lot of work. <laughs> First and foremost, sorry. <clears throat> I've got a bit of a cold, so I have to watch my throat a little bit. Um, it's a lot of work, first and foremost. Um, I'm lucky I've got a very wide skill set. So I'd, I've done everything from Community del Latte to Yat Malgram's work in, in Laban. Method acting is where I started for four or five hardcore years. I've got lots of tool sets, which is wonderful, which is why I always tell people, if you want to get into video game you know, acting or whatever, be an actor, be an actor first and learn all these tool, uh, these tool sets. For me, it was a wonderful exploration. In a linear story, let's take, if you don't mind, a, a game I directed and a performance directed alongside uh, the narrative director and also acted in Deliver Us Mars. That's a very linear story structure. There's a very definite beginning, middle and end. It's more like a film in that way. So you have a little bit of time, maybe the lead in time a couple of weeks when you've got the gig and you're going, wow, how do I play this? To then develop the character, maybe you have some rehearsal time, which we built in as well, and then you're shooting. And then it's like, actually, you're, you're shooting to the finish. And maybe if you're lucky, you get to do pick up, maybe VO only, or maybe you get to do a reshoot day, depending. But that's it. With this game, we had four years, which didn't realize it was gonna be four years. We had four years of going, right, now the story is progressing and progressing and going this way, now this way, and this way, and this way. And largely, we weren't sure where it was gonna go most of the time. 
and you find out about things as they come through, as they're being written in many cases. So actually, it was kind of weirdly easier, a lot more work, but it was actually easier once they'd set the character and understood where the character's core was. Because then it was an exploration of habits and facets and what worked well. And, oh, that's a nice thing. I like doing that. Let's make that a habit when he gets pissed off with somebody because they're trying to manipulate him as opposed to him manipulating them or whatever. But because we had so much time, we had all this generous amount of space to develop a character far further than you would do on a three-week shoot within a month lead in maybe a few days rehearsal so I had an amazing experience with this because there was so much time it was a real slow burn and I think all the cast that I've spoken to the companions but also other people as well lived their characters for a very long time um, and I think that was really cool I really liked working like this because if you take the initial part of act one when you meet a star and he's very bound and closed up, the voice actually is low register. The physicality is more tightened in. And that was actually because I just started and I wasn't really sure where to go with the character. And it was a happy accident that when you get into the, uh, literally just after that first initial moments, he starts becoming more like that and open and a bit more flamboyant and theatrical because he's using that as a cover, obviously, because he's completely damaged inside. You know, but all that kind of stuff came into it as we quite quickly. And it looks like it was deliberate. And actually, I love the fact that it looks deliberate, thank God. Um, but it was a happy accident because I started developing with Stephen Rooney. Not, I didn't develop it with him, sorry. My work was influencing, my rhythm was influencing his rhythm that I was working from. And so that kind of had a feedback loop effect. Um, but it helped us develop the character's openness. And then you get to see more of him in that way. And I think that's happened to quite a few actors on this. Like initially, it was like, well, I know the core of him. Let's just explore there. And then gradually, they become more comfortable with each other especially the companions is a good example of this. The companions start, because they don't always like each other, you know, like a dysfunctional family. And so that allowed, that time allowed us to then find those little habits and nuances. Now, I like Will a lot, but I don't like this person. I don't mean the actors, I mean the characters, right? Because <laughs> we all love each other. It's, it's actually brilliant. It's, it's an amazingly big cast of 248 people. And um, I've met so many of them, and we, they're just such delightful actors to work with. And the companions, we've become a party. It's great. It's really cool. Um, so for that, I, it, it was a really lovely way of working. I actually preferred it. Branching narrative is great as well because you get to work every different iteration of the character. So for me, I'd love to do something like this again. That was amazing. Yeah. And that's such a rare opportunity as an actor to kind of be there from the ground as it's being built yep. up around you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of actors also like hate watching themselves and things like they won't even watch trailers. Hate it. You you are currently like live streaming as you're playing Baldur's Gate 3. But what has it been like for you uh, to revisit the scenes that you recorded, you know, four years ago at this point? It's a funny one, man. It's like, I hate watching myself back in TV and film. I hate it with a passion. Um, I always gave myself a rule that unless a director called me to the monitor, I would never do it. And, I, and that was very early on in my career. And it was very wise because it made allowed me to stay in the moment. It didn't make me... I have, everybody has a healthy vanity. I definitely do. So I did not want to see myself looking good in a shot and then trying to reproduce that on the next take because that's not my job. My job is to live in the, the truthful moment, fictitionally, in the moment. So that was difficult. I always find that really hard. Um, and then well, games are easier because I can get to take my face off, which is a wonderful thing uh, because it allows me to play anything appropriate to my ethnic background, anything within that. So for me, it's easier. There's a, there's a lot more... I mean, Starring's always going to be a part of me, I feel. I've definitely developed his laugh now, like hysterical, high-pitched, naughty, mischievous <laughs> laugh when I'm feeling mischievous. Um, but I think, I think t there is a dis there's a slight distance that you can't really get in TV and film that you can get in animation because although he looks like me, we look similar, I think, um, it's, it's clearly a, an animated character. It's clearly a complete game in that way. It's not literally this flesh it's the it's the everything underneath the flesh that's there so it's a little bit more helpful having said that there are moments i'm like i can't believe they let me get away with that <laughs> you know what i mean so it, it's an interesting experience i definitely find it easier to to play a game i'm in than ever watch anything live action that i'd ever have done that was terrifying it's terrifying seeing that yeah yeah and does that does that change when it's a game that you also did performance capture for or is it the no, same? Not really. Um, I mean, I direct now. I produce in games uh, for performance. Um, I've been acting in games 
for 15 years in voice work and performance capture and motion capture as well. So I view it in a very difficult, uh, sorry, not difficult, very different um, uh, mindset because I, I mentor people as well. Uh, I am fascinated by movement and I started my career in games and movement and then went to voice and stuff. So I view it in a very different way. Um, than I probably did TV and film when I was a young actor trying to somehow get through the industry that clearly didn't want me to work that much. So, so with games, it, because I started with the mechanics first, it broke down performance in a different way. It's still all performance. I think actually, to be honest with you, mocap is probably an old fashioned term now. It should just be called performance capture. It's all performance. And mocap actors, who are actors first that do mocap, you know, whatever, um, it's all performance. Even if it's just a walk cycle, there's still intent. You might be playing as a certain character or a creature or what have you. It's all performance stuff. But I viewed it in a kind of more mechanical way initially of like, okay, I know the feeling of what, well, uh, well how I'm going to get to the feeling of this experience. But what are the mechanics? How do the, what can I do in my body intuitively or maybe have, with a bit of rehearsal and thought to create this character moving forward. So because of that, it does help a little bit of distance, um, I think. Um, I love the work. I, it's the, it's the, the first time I think I've truly found, 15 years ago when I started doing it, I truly found what I was supposed to do and, and where I'm supposed to be. And uh, for me, it was always made sense, theater and film, the fine line in between the two. And it's, it's just been a gift that's kept on giving. I, I'm incredibly fortunate and very, very lucky. And that's down to all the people that have given me work over the years. You know, I wouldn't be here without champions like um, Brian Mitchell from Audio Motion gave me my first gig, for instance. Steve Knievely, the director, we've worked together five or six times now. So, you know, people like that are amazing. And Lauren. So. Yes. How has the technology um, advanced with mm. performance capture over the years? Because you, you know, 15 years, like you said, yeah. I'm sure you've seen it evolve and change. And where do you think it's headed? Because I feel like... Baldur's Gate 3 is such a perfect example of like the beauty of using performance capture for video games and different mm -hmm. forms of entertainment. Agreed, yeah. I think this is where I saw uh, PCAP, um, or rather full performance, let's say, being 15 years ago. Um, there's only about a dozen of us in the whole of the UK in around 2009, 2010 that were doing it. There wasn't many people. Most people didn't want to do it. I spoke to actors in theatre and they were like, no, no, it's going to ruin your career. You shouldn't do it. It's going to ruin my career, so I'm not going to do it. And I just thought, you're wrong. You don't, A, you're not gamers. You don't get it. But I started ZX Spectrum days, right, with cassette tapes and making your own, like printing your own um, games, you know, it's off the back of a magazine cover or what have you. So I was like, well, that's happened within my lifetime. And look at where we are now. So in another 10, 15 years, well, well the one thing that's going to change is software is going to get better. Computers will get more robust and faster. Processors will get stronger. 3D, you know, 3D graphics or graphics cards are going to get better. Therefore, it's going to become closer to film which means nuance, writing, directing, acting, all that stuff will have to raise with it because A, people are becoming, playing more games. Um, and so therefore it becomes not a geeky thing I used to do when I was 14 years old and getting you know bullied for, but it's going to become more mainstream, more, pop, more culture and part of the culture, which it has become. But also the nuance of performance and the need for better performers, better writers than what was originally, oh, don't worry, the, the story's not the thing, the game's the thing. I knew that was going to change. And we all talked about it amongst ourselves, all the performers. And slowly, bit by bit, I think it, we'd suddenly noticed a massive change. For me, I saw the biggest change personally with Planet of the Apes, Last Frontier and Final Fantasy Kingsglaive days. To play an ape, um, we're using ape, ape sang language that we made up for that game. Um, and then also Kingsglaive, the, the facial, um, uh, the quality of the face, facial graphics were incredible. And that was 2015. I was like, wow, that's, I've never seen anything like that. Suddenly, because they even had this little wink that I did as Nyx, which was like a wince when somebody's name was called out, which was tiny. And they caught it and they used it in a close-up camera movement. And when I saw that, I was like, that's it. Now this is where the levels have been raised. This is where the doors open. And suddenly we've got nuance and we can really do some crazy, wild, wonderful things. So, yeah, I kind of saw it as it was going to be now. So when I started Baldur's Gate 3... I was lucky that I was ready to really go, right, I'm going to take this, this, this gift that I've been given. I'm throwing everything at it, blood on the floor, metaphorically and occasionally, literally, actually, uh, <laughs> and just really go for it. In the future, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of talk about, you know, organic motions, that we won't need mocap suits anymore or silhouette stuff. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really tech savvy as in that way. 
you're probably better asking the developers to be perfectly honest. Um, I hope that it'll continue to allow this extraordinary blending of theatre and film together, that this extraordinary idea of using imaginations and really pushing the boundaries of performance. Honestly, I don't know is the truth. I'm not really thinking that far ahead. Um, I just know that right now is where I always hoped and wished and kind of knew that we would get to in terms of games. I'm just lucky enough to be a part of it and to be able to help other actors be a part of it as well. Because um, myself and Celeste Lasada, we run a non-profit um, bunch of workshops to help actors either start in the industry, but at least understand the technology. Um, and that's been a blessing too, to be able to be in that position. I talk a lot, man. You have to intervene sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's like so bell. great hearing, <laughs> it's, it's so great hearing someone talk about something that they are very clearly like excited and passionate. I love about, it. You seem it's to be great. with performance capture. Yeah. Uh, so I, I mean, you kind of already answered this, this question for me, but Probably. I guess I'm going to thoughts. But, uh, you know, performance capture, live action, voice acting, these are all three, yeah. three different aspects of things that you are capable of doing three different ways that you were capable of doing your craft Thank for you. a lot of people who are not in the industry they may not necessarily sure. understand the differences in what the work looks like between mm -hmm. those three but can you give like a, a very very brief understanding of where the differences lie between like just doing live action and doing performance capture so between performance capture live action and voice work yes so um live action is as we know it. it's either theater on a stage three thousand four thousand years old what have you um, then you've got TV and film, which are pretty much the same process. You'll have a fixed camera or maybe multiple fixed cameras. They may be tracking and moving, but essentially it's a passive medium that you're watching the director and cinematographer's vision of the actor's performances. And that's the story usually that it'll follow from a, a start to finish. How it gets there is up for grabs, but it'll start and finish somewhere. Um, that's live action. Um, so voice work, um, which is still acting, um, you're going to be in a booth. You're going to be with a microphone, with a director. You probably won't have any graphics necessarily to go off or even sometimes a storyboard. And you'll be giving a performance, um, possibly line by line or maybe scene by scene, depending. And you have to have fill it with a lot of imagination. Um, it's the voice. It's not really a full body experience, but I always urge people to stand up and give it a full body experience if you can without making too much noise because it helps enormously. It's a, it's a very, 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 very detailed skill. I've got many friends of mine who who, do, who are actors that do a lot of voice work. It is not an easy thing to do. It is not an easy thing to just go, I'm going to not use any of this or just the way I look, what have you, and just use the voice. It's a very delicate skill to do that. And it's tricky, but it's wonderful when people really can nail it and have this wide variety of, of malleability of voice. And then you have performance capture. So then imagine taking the voice work in the booth, the live action stuff, and then the external nature of theatre and you slam it all together. So you're in a volume, which is a three-dimensional volume with near-infrared light being shot off onto uh, a suit with these things on, which, which are markers, which I got tattooed. Um, and they bounce the light back. It creates a skeleton, which the, is the actor. That's the actor's psyche, soul, whatever you want to call it. You can then add any skin and clothes on top of that as a rig. So as opposed to live action, you get dressed up in prosthetics or in an outfit or a costume. Now you can swap all entire bodies and then on top of that, you can add the coloring and, and all the rest of the stuff, the skin of it. And then the act, of course, can perform using the voice. So it's it's like a marriage between all, all different mediums in one. I really think that this is a modern, this is a new modern methodology. Um, but that's a substantial difference. So in performance capture, you, you kind of move a little bit like theater, speak like film. So you can have stillness, you can have nuance, you can have a wide and a close up shot like film simultaneously. You don't know where the camera's always going to be. So the camera may be here favoring. They just say it's going to be here-ish somewhere because the camera can be put in afterwards. Mm. And you can be moved physically in the environment. And the environment's not necessarily set out like theatre. It might just be a bench and a cone to say that's a door. Or it might be a door and no walls like theatre. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's completely uh, what they need and what, what doesn't get in the way of all the um, light going backwards and so with film, traditional, everybody knows how it says CGI, maybe background green screen, but essentially it's live in camera. Voice booth, just the voice. <laughs> so knows nothing else. And performance capture is everything. Theatre, voice, film, the whole works in this one 
open three-dimensional space called the volume. For me, personally, although I love doing TV and film, I love theatre as well, I'm happy to do as much of that as I can for the rest of my career, I adore performance capture. Because the one thing that it has that the others don't is that you can do a 10-hour day, the setup time between each um, costumes change of your, of your rig and also the environment might take five, 10 minutes. So you can act with quality, with rehearsal time as well built in, more in that one day or that four hour session or that eight hour session if you're doing double you know, voice stuff, which we had to do sometimes. Um, you can act more in that time period than you ever can doing a matinee and an evening performance of theater or doing a film where you have an entire set change that takes half a day and maybe you have to come back tomorrow to finish the scene because something wasn't working, lighting changes, blah, 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 where you have to be ready the whole time in your trailer or a green room or just on the street, depending on what you're doing, um, to then do 10 minutes of shooting or an hour of shooting, that's it. So for me, I love performance capture, and that is the big difference, is that you probably will be an actor in working more than any other medium. And that's that was a real eye-opener when I saw that. It was really exciting. Still is, yeah. Not and, succinct uh, at all. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're actually coming up on the end of our time, so I guess I'm going to sure. leave you with one last. This one's going to be a little bit of a fun question for you. Um, so should I do it as a you, star then, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. Uh, all right. So you, if you insist. <laughs> <laughs> so you've you've now been a part of the Dungeons and Dragons universe. No, I know. You've been a part of the Final Fantasy universe. You've been a part yeah. of Resident Evil. You've been yeah. even a part of Star Wars. Uh, I have in a little way. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah the the yeah. Old Republic. You did you did a yeah, few yeah. things. Um, yeah. What is one like franchise or universe that you would love to be a part of in the future that you would love to bring your yeah. talents to? In Elder, some way? Uh, Elder Scrolls Fallout. Mm. Elder Scrolls Fallout, without a shadow of a doubt, and also. Anything Naughty Dog does, <laughs> like anything. Yes. Um, I would love to work. Um, I'm a huge fan, like everybody. I'm a huge fan of the pioneering work they did on Last of Us, one and two. Um, Bethesda is just this all, I mean, I, I would be like a, a merchant somewhere you probably end up killing or something like that. But I, I just love the world of it. It's really fun. The Fallout, I really, I mean, the main quest is always like, you don't do the main quest. Nobody does the main quest. You leave that till the end. So, you know, but for those kind of games and those kind of worlds, it was such fun. I really dig that kind of stuff a lot as a gamer. That's as a gamer, really. But as um, as an actor, I would love to work with Naughty Dog. Um, I think they they really challenged what, I think, what story was at the time. And uh, some of the things they achieved was absolutely extraordinary. So I'd love to work with them. Uh, I like working on indie games as well, though. So, I mean... Uh, to be honest with you, the bottom line is I just want to do great characters, have fun, push maybe a storyline in a way that's unexpected. I, I do tend to play with my characters a lot. How they let me get away with the Heisenberg, I will never know. That was extraordinary. <laughs> that was a, a little bit of Jimmy Stewart, a little bit of um, um, uh, oh God, Nicolas Cage and Cary Grant running together. Are you kidding? <laughs> like, nobody nobody, yeah, nobody when, should sign off on that. So When I realized you know, that was you, that, that surprised me. Oh, yeah, that oh, thanks, me. kid. It's you what you're really made of. It's like that, you know. Buckle up, buttercup. It's, all, it's, it's fun, you know. So um, I've been very lucky, and that is down to everybody else, not me. That's down to people taking risks and chance on me. Um, I'm grateful that I get to do my job, and I have nothing to lose. So when I try and put my work out, it's everything I can, regardless of whether it's indie, double A, triple A, or is it quadru Somebody said quadruple A. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing or not. Um, <laughs> Probably not, yeah. No. You probably have to literally like film another planet for that. I don't know. <laughs> I do have one last Baldur's Gate 3 please question do, please, that please, I please. have to ask because I feel like a lot of fans also want to know the answer to this. Mm. Um, a f I think it was a few months ago, maybe a month ago, on yeah. one of your streams, you said there was like two hours of content no, no, that no, you no, had. That, in that's when taking completely that? out. Yeah, no, okay. it's taken out of context. Please clarify it. Yes. Yeah, I, and I've already, I actually have already okay. clarified it okay. in an, another interview and stuff, which is, is fine. Um, this was a week after it was released. Um, okay. I know that because I got my tattoo then. Um, and it was healing on the thing. What I was referring to is reactivity in, I didn't probably didn't word it very well, but it was a week after, which means people have not got through more than maybe act one or something. So this was a reference about... Um, I don't, this is a spoiler, folks. If you haven't played the game, big spoiler. Well, not big spoiler, small spoiler. But there's a bit where there's like a laser cannon 
and you can blow the crap out of a certain place. And that takes like about two hours, that particular thing, to do that. But you have to do the ending of that in a certain way. And if you don't do, and if you do that, you have to kill a certain someone, let's say. And then if you kill that certain someone, you have to resurrect that person in a certain way. And if you do that, you get this, this bit that you will never see unless you do all of those steps and nobody knew about it. And I hadn't seen it at that point. And then like within two days, obviously I didn't mention it because I'm not going to break NDA or anything. But then within two or three days, somebody found it. And I was like, oh yeah, okay, they found it already. They played the shit out of that. that video. Yeah. I still see that video of you pop up all the time. And I'm like 500 hours into this game. And I'm like, have I missed something? No, no, I no, you haven't. There's before. nothing else to be I found, found in cheese. the game. No, no, no. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, everybody's found everything in the game. What I was talking about was the amazing reactivity of this game. That to do all of this, you had to spend mm -hmm. all this time and then you get this thing that most people will never see because they won't, they'll try and not do that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was about reactivity and possibility. But obviously I couldn't go into detail because I'm not going to spoil things for people. And the game had only just come out. I probably did word it in a very bad way, but it was, you know, but not many people knew about that possibility. Only the people involved in developing that particular possibility knew about it. So, <clears throat> and, and then, you know, not every, I mean, most of the cast probably didn't know about it. The directors didn't know about it, apart from the one that worked with me on that thing. So yeah, that's what it was. There's no hidden secrets as far as I know. Um, again, it's like everybody's seen everything as far as I'm aware, but that's what that was about. Reactivity and hidden things that you can get when you do two hours of slogging through making very specific choices. Now I can talk about it, which is great. <laughs> so rest assured, you've played the shit out of this game. <laughs> uh, one thing, if I, if you don't mind me saying, I know we're a bit over time, but I'd like to add that, please. Um, I have been incredibly humbled by the number of people approaching me that are survivors, um, that have seen and connected with the story, many different characters, by the way, but specifically for me with the starring story. It is incredibly humbling for people to say that they've been seen by the stories and the characters in this. And that on top of that, that it was handled so maturely and with such care and detail. And that for me, I think was the, being one of the biggest honors of this is to have that kind of effect on people through the story and the character and the work that was offered up is, uh, is an incredibly beautiful gift, especially because so many people said it helps them. So I just want to thank the communities for embracing not everybody, but also myself and my character, just to say thank you so much for trusting us with these heavy, heavy things and that we, we really threw our hearts and souls into it, everybody did. And that's also a testament to Lauren and the amazing writers. And my writer, Stephen Rooney, is incredible. So I just want to say that, thank you. Well, that's a good note to end on. Thank you, Neil, so much for coming on and talking to us. Uh, where can where can people find you on the internet? And is there anything that apparently you're everywhere? To <laughs> <laughs> um, they can find me. On, I do Twitch uh, stream. Uh, we do some charity work, and we we do it as a safe space, an inclusive safe space. That's just a comedy show, kind of. Um, we're playing a game at the moment. Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. Uh, I try not to read things too much, like Reddit and things. That is very unhealthy. Um, I do have a TikTok page. I don't use it for anything because I'm old, um, <laughs> but I have it. I'm just gonna, I will post something at some point. It's a very new step. It's baby steps. So that's where I'm at. But I hang out on Twitch quite a lot because I really like it. So yeah, you can find me there a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for asking. Appreciate it. Nice to meet both of you. All right. All right. Adam's gonna hit the button. So just hold tight while we wait for it to. Can we do one up. of those like like everybody goes, everybody laughs and then holds themselves like this, and the credits <laughs> just flash up. <laughs> Big thanks to Neil for joining us. That was a fantastic discussion, Maggie. How do you feel great. about it? I it was awesome. I really enjoyed getting to uh, talk to the man, the myth, the legend behind Astarian. It was a ton of fun. Uh, tomorrow. Steve and Perry are going to be back. They're going to be talking about stuff and things. So you should jump over uh, tomorrow at 10 a.m. live and join them for that. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and uh, we'll see you back next week.